was like, I asked him, are you okay? And he was like, he told me to shh. He's like, just shh. He's like, I, I think this might be it. What do you think is the biggest factor in terms of maintaining motivation for a long period of time? Because there will be days where you feel motivated, and then there are days where you're like, I don't want to get out of bed, or I don't want to go to the gym. How would you suggest people do that? Find, find uh, what drives you. You have to find out what are you, what are you passionate about. What, one of the biggest things that bug me and seem is, is a, excuse me, Mr. Bell, is a motherfucker that has no passion for anything. I did, gave a seminar in China once, and I said, so first you have to find out what your passion is. Lady shot her hand up in the air, and she goes, I don't have no passion. I don't have no drive, and I don't have any passion. So what do I do? <laughs> and I really wanted to tell her, you need to be in another seminar. But <laughs> I said, like, you don't have any passion for anything? Nothing? I mean, you don't have to be a weightlifter. You don't have to. I mean, if you flip pancakes, be a passionate pancake-flipping motherfucker. <laughs> if you wash dishes, be a passionate dishwashing motherfucker. If you sweep the street, be a passionate dis sweet street sweeping mother, whatever the fuck you do, find your passion. Be passionate about that, whatever it is. You don't have to be a way to find that passion. And if it's a really, really a passion, I'm going to tell you something, Stephen. When, when all my strength was gone, everything left. Couldn't do one push-up. Had trouble putting on my clothes, standing up straight. Then you'll find out what real strength is. As if you've been strong all your life and you, you ain't never had a big ass sit back, you know, okay, well, I'll, I'll come back. I'll be able to bounce back from this. I have to go. Yeah, we hate it as weightless. We hate it when an injury or something happens. We have to take a little time off. But when you're talking about, hey, I may not even be able to wake up in the morning, then, I mean, that is a different type of strength. And without that passion, without a faith, the, the, the strength, the, that takes the strength of knowing that there's something bigger than you. There's, uh, this, is just, this is not the end. I know this is not the end. It, it's going to take the, the passion or the drive. You have to have something. And for me, it was faith. You know, I'm laying there. I don't know if I'm going to open my eyes the next morning or not. But I had faith. Big time faith. And, and, and the faith was not that I was going to wake up in this. The faith was whatever God got for me, I mean, it's okay. If I don't wake up in the morning, that's okay too. It's not in my control. I, I don't know whether I'm going to wake up or not. Whatever God decides, then that's okay. And I, I was, after that, after I made up my mind that I was fine with whatever the outcome was. It was well, aren't you worried? Aren't you scared? No. It ain't, even, it ain't even up to me. Why well, I'm going to be worried about it? Why well, I'm going to be sweating? I'm you know, getting more gray hair. All, all this is gray, by the way. It's just for, just for me in big time. So uh, uh, why am I going to be worried about it? It ain't even my control. If I could just say I'm going to keep living and keep living, then I wouldn't need to believe in nothing else. I wouldn't need no faith. But I don't have that kind of power. I don't have that kind of control. So I had to look to somebody who did have that kind of power the power over life and death, the power to say, yep, you keep living, or no, you don't keep living. I had turn, when I turned everything over to him, psh, I didn't have no more words. I wasn't worried about nothing. It ain't up to me. So, you know, well, did you work? No, not worried at all. How you doing, Mr. Fussman? My doctor's coming every day. How you doing, Mr. Fussman? I'm blessed. I opened my eyes up this morning. I'm blessed. I'm good. Good, doc. <laughs> Power Project family, what if I told you that you could eat cereal that doesn't mess with your diet, that doesn't have massive amounts of sugar, that doesn't give you the bubble guts, and that's actually really good for you? Well, that's why we partner with Magic Spoon. Zero grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, 14 grams of protein, and 140 calories per serving, and it actually tastes like kid cereal. <laughs> God dang it. Andrew, how can people get it? Absolutely. You guys got to head over to magicspoon.com slash power project, and that'll get you $5 off the variety pack. Um, links to them down in the description. Let's get back to this video. Uh, Samson, did your dad ever uh, talk to you about, you know, he getting a heart transplant? Did he ever talk to you, like, just say, you know, this might be like my last day or my last days coming up? Like, because, you know, it's, it's good to, uh, it's, while the situation is, uh, sucks, it's good that you can have that conversation because sometimes people just 
know, die in car accidents and stuff. And when you know you're going to have a big surgery, uh, did you guys ever have that moment? Yes. Um, while we were waiting on his heart transplant or his heart to arrive, um, my mom was actually back in the island and she went with my sisters and my brother-in-law. They all went out there and I was the one that stayed back with my dad. Um, obviously I wasn't going to leave. Um, but there was a time, uh, kind of hard to, you know, just kind of process it. But there was a time where uh, he was in his chair, his, you know, his rocking chair, recliner chair. And um, it's bad. He's pale, you know. Um, and, you know, he told me, and I'll never forget this. He was like, uh, I was like, I asked him, are you okay? And he was like, he told me to shh. He's like, just shh. He's like, I, I think this might be it. And his, you know, his eyes were, you know, he was going out. He was, you know, dying. And I put my hand on his lap and I said, you're not going anywhere. There you go. Because I heard God tell me this. Mm. I swear to God, you know, until this day. And I was like, you got to stay with me, though. And I kept talking to him, making sure he was, you know, responding. And he was responsive until the, you know, the paramedics came. And, um, yeah, it was, you know, that was really, really, you know, tough, but not as tough because I already had that um, confidence right. because I already, you know, I heard God talking. So, and he's here now. How do you get a heart? Like uh, you said, you guys said you were, you were waiting on the heart. Heart gets shipped to you in like a box of ice or something like that? That's pretty much it, Smelly. Yeah, they, when they find the right one, uh, you know, we were... Um, the day before, they called me up and they said, well, it's probably going to be a while. We think we're going to send you back to back home, and then we'll give you a call if something comes. So me and the wife were prepared to go back home. And about 3 o'clock that morning, they called and said, hey, Mr. Futcher, we found the heart. And I'm like, whoa, we found the heart? And I said, yep, everything matches up uh, good with yours. And about 7 o'clock this morning, we're going to bring you in and, and do the transplant. And I was like, it was, she called me just like, you know, uh, uh, she was telling me the weather. You know, like, it's, it's clear outside. We found the heart. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, thank you. You know, and I was, I was very grateful because I had flatlined uh, two times uh, the week before, had flatlined. So I was like, man, I don't know how many times they could keep bringing me back. You know what I mean? You know, it's the fifth flatline. Five times you flatlined. I'm like, I don't know how many times... I can come back from these flatlines. I don't want a flatline no more. So when she said we had a new heart for you, I was I was pretty happy. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I was crying. You know, I, right. you know. Yep, I was ready. I was ready to go. Yep. Now that makes me wonder: uh, Are you scared of death in any sense? Since you've died once, technically, right? Well, uh, I guess <laughs> I, technically, uh, flatlining five times. You know, I told I told the the, the doctor, I said, well, you know, I, I've been dead five times, Doc. And he goes, well, technically it was, what do you call a pause? And I'm like, a pause? I'm like, motherfucker, my heart wasn't beating, you know what I mean? So anyway, he goes, uh, so I, technically, I guess I paused five times. And um, so to answer your question, absolutely removed all fear of death. Yep, don't fear death at all. It was the most those pauses were the most peaceful, the most, um, re um, it's, it's, I've never felt that tight. It's such a difference between being in a deep sleep and being dead. You know, it's, it's the difference is you think, oh man, I got a good rest. I'm feeling really good. Try dying. I mean, <laughs> it is no rest like being dead, man, it was uh, the most peaceful, most calm. So it, it will, I think anybody who's been that close or, or had that uh, near-death experience will say the same thing. They don't fear dying anymore, and they'll, they'll tell you that, that with a surety that death is not the end. That's not it. I mean, it's a, a different um, phase, but it's, it's not the end. 
not the end of all. People think, oh, that's it, that's the, you know, that. a lot of people think that way, but anybody who's ever been that close to it will tell you it, it, it takes the fear. What, what I, I don't want to leave. I still like living. I still want to be here because I want to see my grandkids grow up. I like playing in the backyard with my grandkids. I, I love being here, and I want to try to stay around here as long as I can. But when it's my time, it's my time. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'll say, okay, you saved me enough time. So, you know, I can't, what, what can I say? Well, just give me one more time, one more time. Yeah, you gave me five. I need six. You know, no, no, no. I'm okay. I'll be okay with you. Probably uh, more fearful of not living while you're here oh, than you absolutely. are dying, right? Absolutely. Just wasting time is my biggest fear now. Wasting.